Well, with the weather starting to improve, folks are, I'm sure, starting to think about getting back out on the water on their boats. Quincy Police Department once again this year teaming up with the Massachusetts Environmental Police to offer free basic boating safety classes. Bob Bell from the Quincy Police Department's Marine Unit has stopped on by to tell us all about it. Happy spring. Happy spring, Joe. How you doing? I'm doing well. The temperature's going to be 60 degrees today on February 27th. Yeah, it's Not nice. Too bad. One thing to remember, though, the water temperature is still about 38. Ah, so, <laughs> yes. As much as it might seem like, hey, I want to go for a boat ride, if you do, don't end up in the water. <laughs> well, that's true any time of year, right? But especially now, for sure. Yes. Yeah. Um, so this, as I mentioned, this is another uh, partnership uh, between Quincy Police and Environmental Police. Right, the yeah. environmental police sort of oversee the uh, the whole education portion of this uh, for the boating safety class, um, and we, as the Quincy Police, are the instructors. Uh, so we organize the classroom and uh, instruct the class. Uh, they help uh, register everybody and send up set up the. Uh, uh, the certification cards that the students get after they successfully complete the class. Yeah, do you know about how long this partnership's been going on now between Quincy and the state? Um, Even just roughly. Yeah, I would say probably at probably close to 20 years. Is it really? Yeah. Oh, okay. <clears throat> so it's something that folks look forward to, I'm sure, every year. Yeah, we try to do at least two, if not three classes yeah. per year. Um, COVID kind of set us back a couple of years, but there's there's significant demand now for, for people that uh, want to take the class. Is there? <clears throat> Um, it's great for all ages. Um, you have to be at least 12 years old to take the class, okay. or at least turn 12 by the last day of the class. Okay. Um, and then kids that are 12 to 15 uh, can operate a boat um, with that boating safety class uh, card. So a motorized uh, boat. A motorized boat up to wow. 64 feet in length. Wow, <laughs> that, I don't think I'd like to see a 12-year-old behind the, the helm of a 64-foot boat. But and neither would I. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's what the uh, the rule is. But okay. then you know we we talk about state law and mom law, and, right. and mom law trumps. So I don't think a mom's going to let a 12-year-old drive her 64-foot boat. <laughs> I don't even think a mom would want to if she hasn't <laughs> gone up through the class at least. <laughs> right. right yeah. How is the class different than say what the recreation department offers at like Black's Creek? Um, so Black's Creek, they focus on um, sailing yes. and canoeing and kayaking. I think they have a, obviously a, a safety portion of it where they talk about life jackets and, yeah. and um, how to be safe out on the water. Um, that's a hands-on class, which is great. Mm. Uh, unfortunately for us, our class is only in the classroom because gotcha. we, don't, we don't have time to go down to the boat and uh, take people out. And usually there's a, there's a lot of people in the class, so we, <coughs> we can't do that. But yep. we have a lot of uh, videos that show um, what people you know, should be doing and shouldn't be doing out on the water. Yes. Um, yeah. We have props like life jackets and <coughs> flares and fire extinguishers to tell people how, how all that safety equipment works. Yeah, that's great. It really is, uh, and it's free. It's free, yeah, yeah. no charge to the public. Um, I think the environmental police get federal grant money mm -hmm. to put the class on, pay for the books and everything like that yeah. um, each year. You know, we've never talked about it. We should ask um, a little bit about the Marine Unit itself within the Quincy Police Department. I bet you some folks don't even realize it has a Marine Unit. Yeah, well, people probably realize there's 26 miles of coastline. Yes. Um, yeah. So there's a lot of stuff going out on the water yep. um, that if people don't get out on the on a boat, um, they just they can look at it from Wollaston Beach. But there's there's a lot of boating traffic out there. Uh, recreational traffic in the summertime, of course, and then all year round we have oil tankers which are coming in to um, Sprague all the way up the Town River, or they could be going into t Twin Rivers Technology right there by the Four River Bridge, or they could be going through the bridge over to Zitko Braintree. <coughs> so the Marine Unit's primary responsibility is keeping those transits safe, mm -hmm. um, <coughs> keeping the, the flow of energy uh, coming into the, the region is, you know, one of our main goals and making sure hopefully nothing bad happens to right. any of those uh, ships when they're coming in or out. Right, exactly. Um, yeah, yeah. So we, we monitor them all year round and then in the summertime um, we make sure that nobody gets in their way when they're trying to come in the Fort River Channel. <laughs> yeah, it's basically traffic ops on the water, right? So, right, right. When so, it comes to that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we, we talk about that in our class, like, you know, how to stay out of trouble, how to, what not to do around big ships, like yes. don't cut in front of them because they can't see you. It's kind of like a uh, tractor trailer. If you try to pass them on the right when they're making a right-hand turn, it's not going to end well. And they, exactly. can't, they can't see you. So right, yeah. We talk, we talk about that and, you know, mostly how to stay safe on the water. Um, 
we go into anchoring, trailering, um, what are these red and green things out on the water, the mm -hmm. buoys, you know, mm -hmm. the street signs of the water, mm -hmm. how, to, uh, how to work through that. Um, so s some people have never been on a boat before that come to our class. They're thinking about maybe they're just going to get a kayak or something and, and they want to learn. Uh, and then we have other people, we've had people who had their captain's license who came to our class and mm -hmm. just wanted a refresher. Mm -hmm. um, and everybody seems to get something out of it. Um, after the class is done, most people are, are pretty happy with it. And I, I run into people several years later and they're like, oh, hey, Bob, how you doing? Yeah. And, and um, I took your, your safe boating class like eight years ago or nine yep. years ago. Yep. Um, so it does seem to leave a lasting impression on people. Yeah, but that's, you know, that's part of it, too, is developing those relationships with the boating community, right, with each other and with the police marine unit, too. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, um, if you're in a car and your car breaks down, you can call for help and, you know, help will be there very shortly. Right. If, you, if you're out on a boat, it, it can take a while for help to come. And um, we, we try to encourage a community out on the water. So if somebody sees somebody else in trouble, they might go and help, but it, at a minimum call us or the Coast Guard right. and say, hey, there's a boat sinking or you know, a boat on fire potentially. Um, so we do try to encourage it as a, a community out on the water. Absolutely, yeah. and you need to know how to make that call. I mean, there's a skill in, in doing That's that. That's right. right, that's yeah. right. We talk about you know how to use what to say when, mm -hmm. you know, you can call, use your phone and call 911, but what, maybe. Do you, what do you tell people? Maybe, right. maybe. And or, how do you know where you are or what to report? Exactly. You know? yeah. We talk about, you know, how to know where you are. Yeah. Um, we talk, it's a basic class, but we yeah. get into a little bit about navigation. Um, we go over the harbor um, and talk about the different islands, yep. what to watch out for, what obstacles to watch out for, be careful of. Um, but yeah, if there is a problem, how do you contact the Coast Guard and what information are they going to want to know? Um, and you have to be able to relay that information. To Absolutely, them. yeah. Um, and what does, it, I'm sorry. I, I was just going to say, um, sometimes we have people like the, the guy that's driving the boat or the woman that's driving the boat, they might have a partner who isn't that boat savvy. Yes. Um, and the class is really good for that. We've had instances where um, a guy was over by Swanham Yacht Club trying to tie up his boat to his mooring and he was the only one that knew how to operate the boat. I remember and, this. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he, he reached over to grab the mooring, he fell out of the boat. Yep. So he's in the water hanging onto the mooring, he's going to be okay, but the boat's floating away uh, and nobody on the boat knows what to do. I remember this, it uh, was kind of terrifying for a while. There. Yeah. <laughs> it was yeah. scary for them. Yeah. Um, so at least to know um, basic things to do, like how to call for help. How to call uh, for help, how to stop the boat, you know? Right, right. <laughs> Maybe how to anchor it so you don't float away. <laughs> exactly, yeah, exactly. Things like that. So um, we do have uh, you know, a lot of couples that come together to take the class. We got a lot of kids. A lot of kids are interested in getting their their um, boating safety certificate so they can operate a boat. It's their first real chance to you know operate a a machine driven uh, vehicle. Right. Uh, Even before a car, if they're 12 or 13, right? Right. Sure, yes. Yeah. 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 Um, what does the marine unit consist of? Bob? How many members? How many vessels? Um, so we're part of the uh, Homeland Security Unit at mm -hmm. the at the Quincy Police. We have. Um, four guys. We have a lieutenant who, who runs the uh, unit and then there's three officers, myself and two others. Um, we have uh, four boats. Um, so um, it might seem like a lot, but boats need to go in for regular maintenance sure. and sometimes things break. Bo yep. Boats go down, you need to have, have uh, a backup. In yeah, place. and different applications for them too, right? Uh, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Right now we have um, a uh, 31-foot safe boat and two 25-foot safe boats and a 21-foot rigid hull inflatable. Okay. Uh, so they all have their, their uh, special purposes uh, right. in, in patrol. Um, so it, it works out pretty well. Yeah, what's a safe boat? What is that? Um, I wish I had a picture to show you, but yeah. the, the company's name is Safe Boat. Oh, oh okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, and they are pretty safe. But okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> but they're, they're uh, aluminum hulled with a foam collar and an aluminum cabin on, on there. So if people are out on the water, they've probably seen them go by. It's, it's kind of like um, the go-to uh, boat for law enforcement I see. Out, out on the water. Okay. Um, now I'm going to quiz you. What are the names of the boats, Bob? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know so, one of them. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, so the 31-foot safe boat is uh, now called the Guardian. Yeah. And then we have two 25-foot safe boats. One is the Vigilant, the other is the Patriot, and the 21-foot uh, rigid hull inflatable is the Alert. Oh, okay. Very good. You passed. <laughs> <laughs> Do you use the inflatable for, like, 
in shallow applications? Yeah, if, if okay. we need to go shallow, that, that's a very good boat for going shallow. Um, it's an open boat, mm -hmm. um, so it's good if you're in a crowded environment, like if we're doing uh, fireworks patrol mm. on the third or fourth. Um, it's very easy to communicate with other boaters because there's, you know, it's a T-top center console mm -hmm. and that's it. So you can okay. have access all around. Yep. Um, okay. The, uh, the safe boat is good, but you're inside a cabin. You can open the door and talk to people. But, yep, a uh, little more restrictive, yeah. yeah. But better in bad weather, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. You're not out there in the rain or snow, perhaps, at that point. <laughs> yes, absolutely, yeah. So in the wintertime, we go down to two boats. We keep two boats in the water. In the sure. summertime, we have four boats in the, okay. in the uh on patrol. Yep. Um, nothing froze up this year, I don't think, did it? Uh, not yet. No. Um, not at, not there was some skim ice in yeah. the rivers, but um, I know they were skating on um, Sailor's Pond over there for, yeah. for about a week. Yeah, that was uh, about it, yeah. And, but last year we had no ice at all. That's right. There was no skating. It's amazing, <laughs> so, yeah. So we had that, but it seems like things are warming up and uh, the end is maybe in sight, but Mother Nature has a funny way of playing tricks well, on it. Well, as we you know, well know, yeah. I think the temperature's gonna drop the end of the week back into the low 30s. <laughs> it's, it's, it's inevitable, you know, and yeah. uh, March can be very fickle for sure. But it, are you finding the boating season is being extended because of the changing weather? Um, it, it's sort of a shift. Yeah. Um, the last couple of years, the weather hasn't really gotten good until um, July, mm. uh, the beginning of July. There's, um, you'll have a few nice days in the spring, but I don't know if you remember last year, it, it rained and was windy basically until the 4th of, until the, after the 4th of July. Yes, yes. Uh, with a couple of nice days, and then it got nice. Um, and it, it stays nice, like a lot of people, they pull their boat on Labor Day yep. and that's it. But, that was the thing, but right? But there's yeah. great boating in September, well into October. Yes. Um, and the water stays warm yep. until the end of October. It takes a long time for the water to warm up in the spring. Like, yep. it, you know, it doesn't really get swimmable and probably till mid June. Mm -hmm. um, but then it's nice till the end of October. Okay. So it's sort of a shift. I, I wouldn't say it extended, but it, it's Just shifted. It shifted, yeah. yeah. Yeah, interesting. Does the uh, marine need to have divers also? Um, we do have um, a scuba unit okay. uh, with the Q uh, Quincy Police. Um, Members of this marine unit are divers mm -hmm. or uh, land um, support. Um, we call them line tenders. Okay. Um, so we, we have the scuba unit. Uh, there's, we have a joint uh, effort with the uh, Metro uh, Law Enforcement Council, the Metro Lec, um, and there's divers from Situate. Um, Newton and a couple other towns oh. uh, that are on the team. I see. So we train a couple of times a month and then <coughs> we're available for call out 24-7. Sure, sure. And I know that uh, most of the coastal communities at least have a marine unit as part of their police department. <coughs> yes, yeah. most of them have a marine unit or a harbor master. Right. Um, yep. Boston has their harbor unit. Um, I think uh, Everett and Somerville have marine units. Um, Weymouth has a, Quint a police marine unit. Hingham has a harbor master. Hull right. has a harbor master. Yep. Braintree has a police marine unit. Just got a new vessel, I think. In they did, yeah. yeah. They, ju they just got a new safe boat as well yeah. oh. uh, last summer. Yeah, they, they were able to get that on a federal grant. Yeah. And people were like, well, they don't, they don't have very much coastline, but they, <laughs> they have some pretty intense stuff going on on the coastline. They most certainly do. <laughs> very industrial. Yeah, <laughs> right. exactly. Right. Yeah. So uh, it, it it water doesn't know boundaries. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Well, that, that's the thing. We, we talked about You know, when you're out on the water, help can be far away. And, yeah. and um, if you're in a police car uh, on land if you get in a problem people come to help you pretty quickly uh, people from you know the Quincy Police Department or others if, if necessary but out on the water we might only have you know one or two boats patrolling uh, and you could be on either end of town so That's right. we can get help from uh, Braintree yep. or Weymouth uh, Hingham or Hull mm -hmm. we had an unfortunate incident a couple of weeks ago where somebody ended up going over the uh, off off of the uh, Fort River Bridge and Braintree was there to help us very quickly. Um, state police came over, the Coast Guard came over, Boston police came over. So it, it is a good community of everybody kind of looking out for each other yes. and uh, helping out when when needed. Yeah, absolutely, for sure. Do you work with the Coast Guard also? We do, we, yeah. do, we do a lot of work with the Coast Guard. Um, they're always breaking in uh, new boat crew members <coughs> and they usually need uh, someone to 
to uh, be in a boat to kind of play the hapless boater that needs to be towed yep. or, or uh, yep. whatever. So <laughs> we, we, we play that role well. <laughs> okay. okay. It's good for training, right? I'm sure it, you're it, always training. Yeah, you know. we, we are always training. So we do a lot of training with them. And then if um, there's a, a rescue or recovery mission, um, obviously they're always involved. Sure. We're, we're deeply involved with them. Any um, major changes that boaters need to be aware of for 2024, Bob? either in terms uh, of regulations or navigation or things of that nature? Not brand new things. Okay. Um, there's a new rule that went into place a couple of years ago on the, um, the safety kill switch, um, which is a, a strap that basically attaches to you and attaches to uh, the ignition of the boat. So if you fall away from um, the driver's position or you fall over the side of the boat, that will stop the engine immediately. Okay. Um, and that boats, I believe, from 2018 and newer, uh, if they're equipped with that, you have to use it. Okay. Uh, it's a good idea to use it anyway. Sounds like it. Um, yeah. We've had instances where um, it's potentially saved people's lives, and we've had instances where it didn't work and people got injured. Is that right? Yeah, mm -hmm. by the propeller mostly, or, or just being kept uh, by the boat itself? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Not, not that the kill switch didn't work, it was that it wasn't being utilized. Oh, uh, I see, okay. Because sometimes people will... <laughs> it's like a seatbelt, doesn't work if you don't wear it, right? <laughs> That's exactly right. Like <laughs> yeah. a life jacket, it doesn't work unless you wear there it. There you go, yeah. <laughs> uh, so you, it's a, it's, if your vessel is equipped with that, you should be using it. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Um, because if you go over the side and your and your boat doesn't turn off, um, we refer to it as the circle of death. The boat tends to do a circle and it will come back to where you fell off. I it see. just does a circle like that. Yep. It has the potential to run you over. Okay. It happened a bunch of years ago over um, by um, South Shore Yacht Club in the uh, Back River. A guy was on a on a small uh, boat with his daughter mm. and. Um, the boat started and, and took off quickly, and I don't even think it was equipped with a, a kill switch at that time. Um, but it, they both fell out of the boat mm. from the inertia, and the boat came back and uh, struck them. They ended up being okay, but there were some injuries. Okay, yeah. So it's no joke. It, and things no, happen so quickly. Not at all. Uh, yeah, the, people have a tendency just to put the the uh, they'll clip it onto the engine and then they'll just leave it dangling instead of clipping it to themselves. Yeah, and that doesn't do any good. Right. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk about the classes. Uh, there are two uh, sessions, right? Two sessions of classes? Yes, right okay. now we have two, ske two scheduled classes. Um, each one will run um, th for three sessions. Right. So the first one is starting tonight, actually. Um, I'm not sure when this is going to air, but right. <laughs> the 27th yep. at Quincy Yacht Club at 6 p.m. And they're scheduled for four hours, 6 to 10. Wow, okay. Uh, for this tonight, Tuesday, and then the following uh, two Tuesdays. And then right after that, we start into a Saturday session at um, Howes Neck Community Room, which is in the Manic Community Health Building yep. down on C Street. And that'll be uh, three Saturdays in a row from 10 to 2 okay. uh, during the day. Yeah, those are March 16, 23rd, and 30, uh, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Long classes, four hours. Yeah, we've yeah. scheduled for four just in case, but we, usually we get people out of there. Um, three, three and a half hours. Okay. Um, first class is, you know, a lot of paperwork getting everybody signed up that maybe wasn't signed up. And then the last class, um, we have to do the test. Um, and then the, the middle class, we cover, you know, most of the, the meat of the, the, the course. Sure. Um, and is there like a graduation ceremony when they're completed? Or? Um, so everybody, when they com successfully complete the class, yeah. they will get a uh, certificate and a um, safe boating card, a laminated card that they can keep with them. Okay. Um, once you pass that, you can qualify for discounts on your uh, boat insurance, boat ah, insurance. Okay. Um, it allows you to operate. Um, boats in states that require the, the class, like New Hampshire. Yes. Um, Massachusetts doesn't require it if you are over, um, if you're 16 or older for a boat. Okay. Um, so you would have to have the card with you if you were 12 to uh, 15 operating a boat. There's, there's a separate rule for jet skis and <coughs> you have to be a minimum of 16 years old uh, to ride a jet ski and having taken the class. Okay. Once you turn 18, there's not a requirement to have the class uh, for either a boat or a jet ski. Okay. 
Uh, who are the teachers? Who are the instructors? Um, well, that's the Marine unit. The okay. Marine unit. Okay. So it would be myself, Bob Gillen, um, and the other two officers. At all the classes? Um, we try to have everybody there for all the yeah. classes, at least two guys. We try to do a team yeah. teaching because um, everybody has different ideas, and we definitely encourage class participation. Uh, I was going to ask we, about questions and answers. Yeah. Okay. Any questions come up? We usually learn something. I usually learn something every class. Is that right? Um, and I've been boating for a long time. Yeah. So somebody will say something like, oh, I, didn't, I wasn't aware of that. Or they'll ask a question about, like, oh, okay, i got to research that and okay. find out the answer. All right. That's uh, but the, the people who take the class, like I said, they seem to really enjoy it. And um, they remember it. Like years later, they remember the class. Yeah. Uh, so you're doing something right for sure. Uh, yeah, we're trying. If, if that sticks with them. How many people uh, per class? Um, Is there a limit? Or? Yeah, yeah. Right now, I think for tonight, I think we have like 35 people wow. signed up. Wow. Okay. Um, that we have a little bit more room at the Yacht Club than we have at the uh, Manic Community yes, Center. I think yeah. we'll probably have a maximum of 30 at, at the uh, okay. Housing Act Community Room. Okay. Is there still space available, do you know? Um, yeah, we can still fit people in. Okay. Uh, I don't know when this is going to air, but... Uh, Soon. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully right away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, people could come tonight down to Quincy Yacht Club, or they could come uh, that Saturday, three weeks from now. Okay. Um, down to Manic Community Health. The, the sign-ups are done on the Environmental Police website. You can just Google um, Massachusetts Environmental Police Boating Safety Class and it'll come up and direct you uh, where to go to sign up. Okay, so yeah, you do need to pre-register. That's Yes, yes. It, it's recommended to pre-register. Okay. If, you, if it, you can't get in, if they shut it off for some reason, we welcome people to come down and we'll try to fit them in if we can possibly do it. Okay, uh, and there is a phone number um, if folks don't have um, Internet access, 508-564-4961. Uh, that's the Mass Environmental Police Department. And ask for, I guess, the uh, boating, boating safety, safety classes? Yes. Okay. Now then, speaking of safety, you have brought some safety devices with you that we need to show folks, Bob. Yeah, we'd <laughs> like to do a little bit of show and tell. Yeah, definitely. Um, starting for, with life, jack life jackets for the little ones. Um, so this is a nice one for a toddler. Um, the, the important parts of this are the uh, strap that, that goes between the little one's legs. Hold that up just a little bit higher. So there you go. Yep. Good. Like this. Yep. It just uh, clips in here like yep. that. And then you've got a handle here. So yes. if the little one goes in the water and you, you need to get them out, you just grab it. The whole kid comes with you. Yep. You can, yeah. If it's too, f you know, can't reach it with your hand, you can put, get a boat hook there, pull oh. it close. Then you just pull the little kid out of the water. Yep. And this strap here makes sure that the kid comes with the life jacket. Absolutely. They have to be wearing this when they're on the boat, is that right? Kids uh, under 12, yep. uh, if the boat is underway and they are on deck, they have to be wearing a life jacket. Okay. Uh, that's the law. Okay. Um, so if you stop to swim and the kid's a swimmer uh, and you're anchored up, um, they can take it off and go swimming. Because you're not underway. Okay. Right. Okay. Right. Well, but again, if they're below decks, they don't have to. If they're below decks, then they're not required to, to but wear it. But then, then there's mom law. So ah. we, we recommend that everybody <laughs> yeah, wears a life jacket at all times. Yeah. Because uh, like you said, the, it's like a seatbelt. It's not going to do you any good unless you have it on. And uh, if you end up in the water without your life jacket, you wish you had it yeah, on. Yes, you'll yeah. wish you had it on. Exactly, yeah. It's, um, it's really the best rule of thumb, So this, sure. this is the, the little kid one. This yep. is um, more for adults. Yep. Uh, this is an inflatable. Um, so in the old days, we used to have those big orange horse collars that like oh, yeah. choked you while you were <laughs> you know trying to fish or do anything fun. Yeah. It was uh, kind of miserable. But these ones are, are much lighter. Yep. And um, there's a couple of different kinds. There's... Uh, ones that are manual where you have to pull this to inflate it mm -hmm. and there's others that uh, once they hit the water they'll they'll go off. Automatic, okay. So when it, when it goes off it, it has a CO2 cartridge in here oh. right oh, yeah, there yeah, yeah. that will inflate it okay. uh, and then it's just like having a regular life jacket I on. see, okay. Um, so these are really comfortable, much much better than the old days. Yeah, really <laughs> low profile, lightweight. Yes, yeah. very very lightweight, not too hot in the summertime. Right. Um, really comfortable. I've actually like gotten off the boat and driven home with this on, and I, I walk into the house and I'm like, oh, I forgot to take it <laughs> off. <laughs> so you just forget you're wearing it, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah, because it's so comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is kind of designed this for. I've not seen this one before. So okay. this is a belt pack. Oh. Um, PFD. And PFD, personal flotation device. Personal flotation. All device right, I got the acronym. Yes. <laughs> um, so. 
it can be used, a lot of people uh, like paddle boarders like these. Okay. Because it doesn't inhibit their uh, yeah. range of motion. Motion, yeah. Right. Okay. Um, so this is a manual one that, because if you're anything like me, if you try to paddleboard, you end up in the water quite frequently, <laughs> and you don't want it going off automatically. <laughs> so once it goes off, is it done? Is the one, yeah, once yeah. It, it does have like a manual inflator, um, okay. but once it goes off, you, you need to get a new arming kit and CO2 cartridge gotcha. um, and pack it all back away again. Right. Okay. But um, this, you're actually required to have a uh, life jacket with you uh, on your paddleboard. A lot really? Of people, a lot of people don't know that. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. so um, this I, is probably the best solution. I've seen paddleboarders, they never have them on. Very so, rarely. Yeah. Um, but this is this is a good solution. Okay, so that will keep you afloat on, by your waist? Um, what happens is it, it opens up um, and then there's a, uh, it'll, it will inflate. Yep. So it's around your waist. Oh. And then this all comes oh, out okay. like this. Put that around your neck. And then okay. you just pop your head through there, and you're, and you're floating. <laughs> Look at that. Okay. Wow. Yeah. How much would something like that cost? Um, about a hundred bucks. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Very. I, I would say you know, and it's going to last you at least ten years. Right. So ten yeah. bucks a year for life insurance. <laughs> it's Can't pretty good. Get deal. that anywhere else? Yeah. This yeah. is the manual inflator. If you need to uh, manually inflate it. Okay. Um, okay. But it's. It's this, pretty pretty neat. I bet you this is news to a lot of paddle board boarders for sure. So that's good, yeah. Good the fact that they need one is yes. probably news. Yeah. <laughs> right. News exactly. Well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But this this is a, a good thing for uh, paddle boarders. Sure. Very good. And you brought the old standby, you know, the uh, the winter jacket, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so not today, but generally well, this right, time yeah. of year, yeah. <laughs> you would want to wear something like this, which has it's a coat that has flotation built all through it. Yes. Um, and it's got so some weight to it for sure. Yeah. yeah. So it'll yeah. it'll float you really well. It'll yeah. give you good insulation from the water. Yes. I mean, it's not waterproof. The water will get in there, but yep. it, you'll stay warmer. And um, it's also very warm um, when you're on the boat this time of year. Sure. Um, just trying to stay warm. So it's double so duty basically. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So this is very popular. These are a little bit more expensive. These are probably a, a couple hundred dollars. Okay. But uh, it's all an investment. So um, when you're talking about safety, you know, personal safety, um, <laughs> it's lo really low cost for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I didn't uh, I didn't bring a radio, but they they make um, marine radios that you know kind of look like Similar this, this to police that. radio, except they float. Yep. Um, this one unfortunately won't float. <laughs> no, I don't think the city would appreciate you dropping <laughs> that in the water. No. No, they're really expensive. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> um, so. I didn't bring one, but those you can get a, f a waterproof floating um, VHF radio, which is a boat radio. You can call the Coast Guard with it for a hundred dollars. Okay, a really cheap insurance. Yeah. and we recommend you know all boaters, whether they're um, kayaking or, or canoeing or or um, even a paddle boarder, mm -hmm. have one of those in case they get in trouble. They can call for help, especially if they're by themselves, right? Nobody's yeah. watching them. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Sure. So cheap insurance. Yeah, I know. Obviously, everybody's going to have um, multiple cell phones with them, but they don't always work. All yeah, the especially water. after they get wet. Well, that too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there is that. Um, I mean, you could put it in some sort of waterproof bag. Yeah. Um, would be, you know, the, probably the first least expensive step. And they don't float. They do not float. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So floatable waterproof radio is is huge, and we talk about all these things in the in, in the, the class? safety class. Okay. Um, so again, it is, let's see, February 27th, March 5th, and 12th, 6 to 10 p.m. at the Quincy Yacht Clubs. So that's new this year, right, that location? Yes, yeah. yep. they were very kind enough to allow us to use their upstairs room uh, for the class. Nice. Uh, and then if you uh, want to do the Saturdays, March 16th, 23rd, 30th, 10 to 2, uh, back at the um, uh, Housenet Community Center. Right, and Street. depending on demand, if there's significant uh, demand for another class, we might put on another one. Um, We'll let you know. Please, yeah. yeah. We can uh, post that up for you. Yeah, that'd sure. be great. Uh, Pre-registration, it is free, but pre-registration is required. Um, Mass.gov, uh, Environmental Police Department, or 508-564-4961 is the telephone number. All right. Anything else we should let folks know about, do you think, Bob? I think that about covers it. <laughs> we got it all in there. <laughs> How many boats are registered in Quincy? Or oh. even just roughly. Uh, I see the Marines is just... Packed Almost over. two thousand. Are they really? Yes. Wow. Okay. Yeah. There's a lot, and and um, there's boats that are registered with the state, and then there's boats that are um, registered with uh, they call it documented with the Coast Guard. Oh, okay. Some of the bigger boats are, are documented, but yeah, the marinas since COVID, uh, 
the boat business has been doing very well. Mm. The marinas are almost all full. The yacht clubs are, are uh, pretty full. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of people uh, enjoy boating. I don't blame them. It's it's nice. <laughs> Maybe you mentioned the Quincy, Quincy Yacht Club. I think they're celebrating their 100th anniversary this year. That's right, so, yeah. yeah. So that's very good, good for them. Yeah, excellent. All right. I, I thank you for coming over and uh, sharing this information. Hopefully we get uh, some folks to come to class yeah, for you. Yeah, my pleasure. Hopefully we'll get a few more folks to sign up and yeah. uh, looking forward to the class. And a safe boating season. Once and a safe time. boating yeah. season, yes. <laughs> Thanks again, Bob. Thank you. And thank you for watching us here at AM Quincy. I'm Joe Catalano. We'll see you next time.